after I was at this interview practice and I thought, you know, in terms of a desire for a less mediated thing, it would be great to do things in live, um, and maybe start to do the interviews in public. So then in 2006, my collaboration with Julia Peyton John started, and uh, as co-director of the Serpentine, uh, she is director, and we basically, you know, began uh, to think what we could do together, and, and Julia invented these pavilions in 2000, a visionary project which has each year a new pavilion on the lawn. It started with Sahadid, and you know I had just come up with the marathon idea, so we thought we combine it. One plus one is eleven, and we would have these marathons, you know, in the pavilion. Since then, a lot of different type of marathons have evolved. There's not only the interview marathon. There's also these sort of more performance marathons. They're a bit like group shows. Uh, they're a bit like a festival. I'm very interested in this festival structure. I think the idea of the sort of festival is maybe as impo important right now as the notion of the exhibition. I think it has, you know, uh, a great potential for the 21st century for knowledge production, but also for pooling knowledge, for going beyond the fear of pooling knowledge, as Georgi Kepesh so beautifully said, for actually bringing, you know, different disciplines into a, a contact zone. And then an invitation came, which which I could not, you know, not do because it was just too beautiful. That all of a sudden Nadia. Uh, called from Greece and Nadia had this fantastic idea that she said that she spoke to the, the minister and she spoke to the mayor of Marathon and that it would be this 2,500 years marathon. So we brought basically the project back to its origin and, um, uh, and the day when the marathon arrived in Athens from Marathon, the 2,500 anniversary and obviously it has this whole political connotation of the marathon which is so interesting it became an independent march you know, in terms of democracy uh, since the 60s. And and it felt interesting that um, uh, that we do this as a um, as a moment also where the marathon could self-reflect on where it comes from and where we could connect to the history and actually see if antiquity can be a toolbox. You know, because very often if we think about the future, we invent a future made of fragments from the past, as Panofsky said. And so that was really the enjeu of the you know of the of the of the Athens marathon. It was also the possibility for me to to not only you know connect to the to the history of the marathon, but also for the first time in a more thorough and deep way connect to the Greek art scene and to, to Athens and um, uh, interview uh, great pioneers from uh, Canaris uh, to uh, Valauritis, uh, whom I always wanted to interview uh, in terms of the protest against forgetting and, and the memory, um, and yet at the same time also to bring guests, international guests, you know, to Athens who have had a, a connection to uh, to, to, um, to Greece, I mean, think about Jeff Koons, for example, who's had so many exhibitions in Athens, but where actually Greek antiquity plays a very big role in his recent sculptures and mainly in his paintings. So it was amazing to have uh, Jeff, you know, speak in, and many, many younger artists also, um, artists from all over the world, from Anna Bougidian, uh, from, from, uh, from, from Egypt to, um, uh, to Huang Yongping, from China, obviously Sarah Morris had a strong connection to, um, uh, Sarah Morris had a strong connection to the Olympic theme in terms of the portrait she had made of the Olympic Games in Beijing. We had about uh, uh, 35 marvelous speakers, all of those who made a great contribution. It included also a lot of younger Greek artists and architects that allowed really for me to understand more this very complex, exciting and extraordinary scene there is in Greece. It opens a lot of, you know, questions and, you know, hopefully there will be another opportunity to connect to, to Greece in the future and dig deeper, no? And what remains is, is an archive. I mean, it produces archive. Um, it produces, hopefully, memory. It produces a lot of sparks. It produces a situation where we have um, uh, the possibility, actually, of, of, uh, of, of emerging also of features we would not think about before. It's also like a complex dynamic system with feedback loop, and it's full of surprises. You know, each time a lot of very surprising things, you know, come to the, uh, come to the surface. So what remains is the memory in, in, in terms of the people who were there. What remains is the experience people made who came, who spent an evening and a night together. Uh, which is usually, you know, a more intense experience than if you just go to a lecture. But what happens, it's, it's a community. I think everybody who was in this room in Athens is part of a community now and has made an experience together and, you know, remains connected. So that's the aim. I think we live in a moment where it's very important to produce, you know, communities. And obviously, you know, social networks more and more produce online communities. But I think it's very important that we also have physical communities, that, that we are together in a room and, and exchange and, and discuss. And, you know, we still live in a very segregated world where basically, 
art, science, architecture, literature, music don't necessarily count each other. For example, you know, um, uh, it, it's always very, very important that there is also this bridge to literature, which was so important in the 20th century avant-garde in surrealism, and that's why it was so important, you know, Isval Auritis to have one of the protagonists of surrealism there, to create this bridge from all the disciplines to literature and from literature to all these disciplines. Is, you know, is key for me. And I think very often these encounters, they don't happen automatically. We don't have these salons or, you know, we don't have a cafe culture where people just would need. And so the marathons are a little bit an attempt to be a catalyst, to be a catalyst to make these encounters happen. There was this connection to, you know, antiquity uh, had a lot to do with, um, you know, the context. And they happened in the Acropolis Museum with a view on the Acropolis. I mean, we had the big window. It was the most amazing backdrop ever a marathon has had. Obviously, another topic which was very contextual and topical was the whole connection to the crisis, no? And I think the way how also a crisis is a possibility and an opportunity for a lot of inventions and a lot of new, you know, new thoughts. And I thought there was a great sense of optimism in the room, which I thought was very, very interesting, given the fact that, you know, what one has read in the press and, and you know, uh, uh, there have been so many, you know, gloomy reports about the situation in Greece. And I thought it was incredibly interesting to, to, to have these great, you know, very optimistic, you know, uh, statements also. And, and yet, at the same time, also, many, many of the participants addressed the crisis. It's not that there was a kind of a, you know, a, a denial. It's always also a collaboration, you know, and I think it's very important that it's not me draft, you know, drafting a master plan and, you know, top down kind of doing a list, but very often it's always, and it always, always is a discussion. You know, I think that the 20th century has been a century of manifestos, and I think manifestos are very loud and very masculine. And as Tino Segal says, maybe the 21st century is more like a conversation than a manifesto. And so I think the, 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 the marathons aim at that. So for me, it's always also about listening. It's about uh, involving a lot of local participants in the selection process of the speakers, of the, of the performers. Uh, and so, so we had, uh, you know, with Nadia, a very strong dialogue. And that was my outside view on Greece and her, you know, much deeper inside view of Greece because she knows the context so well. And that produced this marathon in, you know, association with all the advisors, all the people who have helped us. It's a big collaboratorium. Uh, last but not least, I can maybe say, I mean, the challenges, I think, in, in terms of art, is obviously the question right now, you know, it's something we address with Utopia Station, is what, you know, can be the, the, the social contract for art, and, and, and I think that's something which is coming back very strongly in the current, you know, in these difficult times, and, and I think what is also interesting is, is um, what is also interesting it's not only the question, you know, of Utopia Station, which, you know, Ernst Bloch, uh, when he was, you know, pushed into a corner by Adorno to define what really Utopia is, it's something is missing, you know.